Okay, we try to calculate the displacement using velocity time graph. So this diagram here shows something that's traveling at 20 meters per second at constant velocity for the whole 10 seconds. So what we can do is think about if, if it travels 20 meters every second, the first second it would have traveled 20 meters and then another 20 meters and so on. So we, there are basically lots of 20s. So what we can do is we just have to actually just work out the area underneath this graph to figure out the total displacement. So 20 times uh, 10 will give me a total of 200 meters traveled. So the area underneath represents the total displacement. In this graph here, we can see it starts off at 10 meters per second and it decelerates, its velocity is decreasing and then it's actually going the negative direction afterwards, it's going backwards now. So here stop, it stopped for a second, that's actually zero meters per second and it changed direction. So how do we figure out the displacement here? It's the same idea, it's the area under the graph, but this time it's triangled. So here it's going to be 10 times 4 divided by 2. See, 10 and 4 divided by 2, that gives us 20 meters plus 20 meters. Now this triangle here, it's actually in the negative quadrant, it's actually a negative displacement because it's going backwards now. So that is going to be um, 2 times 5 because of this is 5, that's 2, but then divided by 2 because it's a triangle, that gives me minus 5 meters because the area underneath represents negative displacement. So the total displacement in this case is plus 20 minus 5 gives me plus 15 meters. So it's still, it's overall, it's actually still moved in the positive direction. That minus 5 didn't do much. Okay, now it started off at a positive velocity at 3 meters per second and it's accelerated at a constant rate to 5 meters per second. Okay, um, how do we calculate the distance traveled here? It's still the area on the graph. I could chop this up into a rectangle and a triangle or I can just treat it as a trapezium and use the area of a trapezium equation from maths. So I'm going to treat this as, an, as a trapezium and this is what it says. You need to do this part here, the top part, 3 times the bottom part of the trapezium, 5 times it by the height of the trapezium, which is 10, and then divide that by 2. So in this case, 3 plus 5 times 10 divide by 2. That gives me plus 40 meters. Okay. What happens when the acceleration is changing? So this diagram shows something that's moving in the positive direction, it's accelerating throughout the whole thing, but the the, the rate at which it's accelerating is changing um, because we can see from the gradient. So in this case, you can't actually um, just figure out the area using some formula. You have to chop this up into chunks and figure out the area using a bunch of trapeziums, or you can just count the squares. The more um, chop, slightly chop this up into, the more likely your answer will be accurate. So you have to calculate the area by literally counting squares or chopping up in triangle. And there's another method called integration which is more complicated which you learn in maths. Okay, for this one here you can see it starts off at 0 meters per second and constant acceleration all the way up to 20 meters per second. I want to figure out the displacement in this section so I'm going to work out the area on this graph. That's 20 times 4 divided by 2 that gives me plus uh, 40 meters so that's plus 40 meters now it's traveling at constant speed so here i can just use the equation um, s equals vt it's actually delta s equals delta vt and uh, v delta t so here it's 20 times uh, this is 6 so that gives us plus 120 meters in the second part so that's plus 120 meters and then finally we have a trapezium over here so this one here is a trapezium 
So it's, you're going to use that formula from la last time, s equals u plus v times t over 2. So u is 20 plus 10 over, well, times that by the t is just 5 seconds over 2. That gives us plus 75 meters. So overall, if you add up all the total distance, you get plus 235. And this is the graph displacement against time. You can see at the beginning, it started at 0 meters per second, which is why it's level, 0 gradient, and the gradient increased. And then it traveled at a constant speed. And then the speed started decreasing, which is why the gradient starts to decrease, but it doesn't go flat because it's still moving at 20 meters per second here.